My name is Thomas Broad. I'm the uh, Eugene and Marcia Applebaum Professor of Neurosciences at Mayo Clinic, and I'm the lead investigator for the CREST trial of carotid artery disease. In CREST, we looked at a major cause of stroke, which is from the carotid artery. One carotid artery goes up either side of the neck, and when it becomes narrowed with plaque from hardening of the arteries or atherosclerosis, Stroke can occur as blood clots go from the area of narrowing up into the brain, block blood flow, and produce a stroke. We have two ways of treating that in terms of intervention. One is carotid surgery, where we go in with an operation, with incisions, and the narrowing is cut out of the carotid artery, and the artery is sewn back up. The other treatment is to go in with a catheter and put a stent where the narrowing is, open up the narrowing and smooth out the surface, again, to prevent a stroke. The purpose of the CREST study was to compare those two ways of treating carotid narrowing. Carotid narrowing causes about 5 to 10 percent of the strokes in the United States. And since there are about 800,000 strokes a year, we're talking about 40 to 80,000 strokes a year. We, if we can find the best way to prevent those strokes, then we've done a service to those patients. The study had two phases. The first phase was focused primarily on the safety of the two procedures comparing surgery to the stenting. And in that phase, both procedures were equally safe, very safe. But with the surgery, there were fewer strokes during that surgical period. But with the stenting, there were fewer heart attacks during the surgical period. And overall, those safety results balanced out. In the first phase of the trial, we could only follow the patients for about two and a half years. But Medicare age patients live longer, men up to 18 years or longer, and women up to 20 years or longer. So the second phase of the CREST trial was to look at the long run results to try to answer the question for patients and their doctors, which of these two procedures is the most durable in preventing stroke? The results of the second phase were very encouraging. We have 2,502 elderly patients with an average age of 69. Yet over that 10-year stretch, only about one per 100 patients per year had a stroke in what we call the territory of that carotid artery in the neck leading up to the brain. This very low rate shows that these two procedures are not only safe from the first phase of our results, but very durable with regard to the second phase. So the second phase completes a story. We have two safe procedures. We know now that they're very durable and effective in the long run. So what does the patient do? Well, patients and their physicians have preferences. With surgery, of course, there's usually general anesthesia. Uh, there's an operation. Uh, there's intubation, you know, the breathing tube that one gets with an operation, the discomfort immediately after any operation. Um, on the other hand, uh, with the stent, uh, there can be a little discomfort in the leg where the catheter goes in. But there's no anesthesia, there's no scar, and patients and their physicians today have the right to have preferences between these two procedures based on their differences. Now we know they can choose either one depending on their preferences. With the second phase results where so few strokes occurred, one could ask, well, was it the procedures or was it that people weren't smoking? They were controlling their blood pressure. They were taking medicines to lower their cholesterol. And that, that's now another phase of our efforts to compare medicine to these two procedures. So in CREST II, again supported by the National Institutes of Health, we're comparing surgery to medicine and stenting to medicine to see if an intensive approach to blood pressure, cholesterol, smoking, and the other risk factors for stroke, whether that intensive approach can be as good as surgery or as good as stenting.